Wasn't it against Vega? Was it actually? Vega? I think it was Vega. I'm pretty sure it was Vega oh, last God. night, actually. Who did VP play against then? <clears throat> they... Because VP played, tw oh, well, VP played twice that night, didn't they? Wait. I'm gonna check that. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check. I'm 100% sure, actually, that it was Vega that they tied against. Please tell me I'm not going crazy. Please. Because, like... because they beat the Magnus. <laughs> the... Uh, Mag Magnus. They, no, Power Rangers, ha Power Rangers had Magnus on a rise, and they had a slot no, as well. No, not Magnus. They, they, I keep calling it. Uh, Mag they Brood. beat the Brute Mother. Yeah, the Mag Oh, Brood. yeah, you're right. Yeah, it was Vega then. Yeah, it was Vega. Virtus Pro tied hell? against Scary Faces, I think. What the hell am I thinking of? No, they, they won against v Scary Faces. Virtus Pro played against Scary Faces and ATN. ATN. Okay, I'm just going insane then. We're, yeah. We've had so many games. Honestly, I'm just really dumb. It's, I'm just, just blame it on the break. <laughs> oh, there's a beanbag down here. I've been lying down on a beanbag waiting <laughs> for this series to start. Oh, goodness. Okay. So, uh, Power well, Rangers, they, they. I mean, Virtus Pro, Vega, you know, they're both pretty good teams. So, I think that the point still stands. They they not only won, but they won in style in game number two in that series. For CNL without Swift ending, um, I'm not sure how much this will affect them because, you know, the core of their lineup has always been really EGM, Bambo, and PyCat. Saxa, no, we're not, not taking anything away from him. Very solid support player, but the, the real strength of their team lies in uh, the other players. But Power Rangers. I think that for CNL, they'll run into a bit of an issue just because of like roles, just because Niqua is an offlaner, right? I think he also used to play support as a stand-in sometimes for Alliance, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure if he feels comfortable playing, say, like a mid lane or a carry. So I just have to assume that they're going to switch around a bit. I, I doubt that he's just going to ex accept the carry role, but we'll see. Um, I like the draft, however, though. Uh, just looking at the picks, this is a classic. I hope this is a classic. Sexy Bembo Broodmother. Sexy Bembo, when he was in Mouse Sports, when he was like one of the... I mean, he's, again, one of the better offlaners in the scene right now. But, yeah, back then, his Broodmother was feared. Huh. Audio delay. Excellent. Now that's that's what we want to see. I, I, I think, no, uh, I don't think it's happening now. I think it's the camera's... Uh, when uh, when we've got the studio shot up, but uh, we'll we'll see that we'll see how, what we can do later on. Four CNL, Bane Elemental, Night Stalker, a couple of very annoying supports to deal with here. Power Rangers. Now Saxa, he's played uh, not Saxa. Wrong team. Yep, my mind really has melted. Is it? <laughs> I was going to go into this whole thing where Saxa plays a ton of support Lena, and it's going to be really good. But now I'm, now I'm wondering where, where do they put this Lena? Is it support or? towards the mid lane because queen of pain doesn't Five feel like you know a tron really. safe lane hero he's more the you know like slark slada or wraith king kind of guy right Reserve time. yeah i i just assume that it's going to be a rise on the queen of pain i think that's much more standard mm -hmm. but you know a rise sometimes he just thinks crazy rise things and then he pulls out a magnus and then he does the rise things so um I think they're, th that's the beauty of picking up the Queen of Pain so early, right? You don't really, you're, you're not tied to a lane or any sort of like composition. You can still run in the off lane even if you want to run into the safe lane. I mean, we've even seen support Queen of Pain from Alliance, so technically everything is possible and that's the beauty of picking her. And see, they go for the Ember Spirit, so that's like even more versatility. They can rotate things around. Okay, I, I think they go stock standard, you know, Ember Spirit safe, Queen of Pain mid. Lena, yeah. support role. Tusk could. Uh, Tusk is like the one that's still up in the air a little bit, support or off lane. For CNL, they could still potentially, you know, have the Night Stalker as the uh, as the two role towards the middle lane and have Bane as their support right now. Broodmother mm, rarely switches things up, is uh, almost always alone in her lane, whether Ten it's safe or off lane. I don't know how I feel about an aggro tri lane here from 4CNL. Five you know, Night Stalker and Bane could work decently, but uh, I, I don't know about the merits of it. Especially yeah, if we've, you've, uh... we've actually seen a lot of Night Stalker Bane lately. Um, I'm, I'm kind of, it's kind of slipping my mind. I can't remember who it was, but there's this one team that actually runs Night Stalker Bane dual offlane. Quite, I think it's Empire actually. I think Empire does it um, with Resolution and No Fear um, on uh, the Bane. It, it's, it's okay. But I feel like against the Lina, maybe not so much, just because Lina is really annoying in lane to play against. But, you know, if... And, yeah, again, I'm, it only it would only make sense if they actually put the Brute Mother mid, which technically they, they could do. Again, they need to switch up their roles anyway, just because Nikwa is in here now. 
and Sexy Bamboo certainly feels comfortable with that root mother, whoever he plays. Well, right now, looking at it, for CNL, they've got lots of laning dominance. Yeah, they've, they've got Broodmother, Nightstalker, Bane, they can run around, they've got single target focus spells, and that's it. I feel like if you're going to go down this road, you don't really want to try and balance things out and, you know, have a bit of AoE, have a bit of this, bit of that. You kind of want to just go, right, we're, we'll pick off these heroes, we'll get two kills and have the numbers advantage, and we'll go from there. And have a couple of heroes, you know, short cooldown abilities. Gyro maybe could work, just the fact that he can get set up nicely by uh, by the Bane and Nightstalker. But yeah, there we go. Have Wraith King. Have these like multi-cycle heroes that just keep on running forward. And that's, that's what I feel like you should do. This is going to be nasty in the mid to late game uh, if it ever gets to that. Just because Wraith King is really difficult or really annoying to deal with. Uh, if it's in the hand of Pyacad, I wouldn't even be surprised to see like a Midas. Uh, I like Midas on the Wraith King just because the level 16 on Wraith King is actually really important. Um, getting, getting that 60 second reincarnate is actually pretty pretty good. And if you have like a Wraith King and Night Stalker running at you, like it's it's gonna get really difficult to kill them, right? Um, and the beauty of Wraith King is he can Wraith King is he can't even be active really early on with a Blink Dagger as well. So um, there's a bit of flexibility there as well. Oh, my banner disruptor. Stop that chasing power going even further. Now, four CNL. One roll, three roll. I'm I'm now thinking more and more that Night Stalker will be played by Pycat. You know, that, that was one of his heroes for for a good amount of time. But Power Rangers, where do they go with this? You know, they they need a little more sustain, I think, a little more defensiveness to bolster their lineup. It's it's kind of unfortunate for me that they've banned out Wyvern and Dazzle. You know? Because these would be kind of perfect heroes for them. Just to try and give them that. Maybe time. maybe they could look at a Shadow Demon, potentially. SD Lena, have Tusk towards the offlane. And then you counter that aggression with, you know, uh, the, a good old counter initiation tool. Disruption into Light Strike Array and get some pick off kills of your own. You can also try and save people, the Queen of Pain and Ember Spirit, because you disrupt and then they can blink or remnant away and you give them that, that freedom just to play a little more aggressively as well. And I also, like, Purge is amazing against Wraith King and Night Stalker. It really is, it really is. But under the very same notion, I think that Earthshaker could also be strong, just because of, uh, against these melee cores, uh, if we assume that the Night Stalker could potentially be core. But even even as a support, Earthshaker is really strong, just um, separate, you know, separate the enemy team. Um, it is a really good counter-initiation, Fisher, Blake, Echo. It's really strong against Brute Mother. And it also is a really good setup stun, just because the Fisher has such a long range, he can stun from the fog. And set up Edlina Lightstrike Ray, for example, or even like a Queen of Pain gank. I think it in theory can work well, but oh! So Tusk is support. Okay. Okay, and that, that was one of the things where it really was up in the air, but. Was. Like, Razor is no Rise hero. Ember Spirit it really isn't. for Tron. So Queen of Pain offlane, I guess, for Cheshire Cat, and yeah, sure, that works out pretty decently. So do they run. An aggressive trial lane with the Queen of Pain, which is potential. Or do they leave her up there? Because she, she needs levels. If anything, I would run the aggressive trial lane with the Razor, right? Or the Ember Spirit. I think... Five seconds remaining. I, I don't think you want to run an aggressive trial lane with the Queen of Pain. I do think there's a potential for aggressive trial lane, though. I think it's more that you don't want to leave one hero against Broodmother. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. It's... It, it's it's interesting. We'll see how uh, see how they handle this. But for CNL, come on, show us the money. Is it going to be another support hero? I feel it coming. I want this Pycat Night Stalker. Okay. Oh, Pycat Invoker. Pycat Invoker. There we go. So Bane and Night Stalker to set up for this. Saxa on the Wraith King support. Yeah. I I, I I mean he's like a seven. He's a seven k MMR pub player. He could be like you talked about him switching roles, right? And Bambo could be switching to the support role. I don't. I don't know what I prefer more: support Wraith King or support Night Stalker. In this situation, anyway, I, I think support Night Stalker would be better. I think actually the support Wraith King is better, just because you have the Invoker. I believe Pyke wants to play that Sunstrike Invoker, and you just want to have the Bane and the Wraith King. I mean, sure, the Bane itself would be kind of enough to do this. You know, just Nightmare and two Sunstrike is a classic combo, but just having the Wraith King there as well, I feel like could be better. And you, you're also a bit more aggressive. I feel like if you have Wraith King and Invoker as cores, I think you're too passive early to mid game ish. Okay, let's see. Items. No, don't pause. I want to see what items no! people are picking up. Come on, get it together. And so it begins the great pause of our time. 
defense of the pauses. I will say though that, I mean, it wouldn't be a Dota game if there wasn't a pause after the draft, right? It would be. It would be a Dota game. <laughs> Just please let me let, let me have my Dota game. <laughs> it's not happening. But yeah, that that is really uh, Pycat Invoker. I mean, he's it is one of his signature heroes. He used to run it a lot. He is definitely very well versed in playing this hero. He, he doesn't have any good items for him though. Yeah, that's actually what I that's actually what I kind of wanted to lead up to. Like the fact that even though this is like one of his signature heroes, he actually manages to have like the crappiest <laughs> cosmetic items. Like this has to be a Smurf account. There's no way he only has these items. Like come on. <laughs> What? Where, where's his where's his immortal hair? Like really? Exactly. Like, where, where's the immortal hair? Where are the pauldrons of the 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 pointy sky reaching pauldrons? What are yeah, the, the hell they called? The, 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 sh the shoulder like, pads that reach up to the heavens. Where he doesn't have forge spirit um, cosmetics this, either. This is like the least pimp invoker ever. Like this is a disappointment, honestly. Well, we'll we'll leave it down to his play. We'll see. We'll see if he makes up for it with some. And it's a support night stalker. Okay. Uh, I believe he has boots. Yeah, he started with boots. Sucks up, has a stout shield. So, and it looks to be an aggressive sort of like trident situation. Does it actually? I don't know. Nikwa. Yeah, I think he's gonna go top. Interesting. The fake out. I mean, th this was the Bambo special. This was something that he really pioneered. Was the fake out web, where he'd run to the off lane, he'd uh, place the web down somewhere that the enemy could see and they'd scout out. And then he'd run as quickly as he possibly could back to the other lane across the map. Because then the supports would bring sentries, they'd get themselves ready and prepped. But you know what? The Radiant are ready for this. Observe ward is down, so they'll see that Saxa is still around here. They'll, they'll uh, keep an eye out for Sexy Bambo roaming around as well. The but how are we looking? Arise mid lane on the Razor. He's got Pool Tango as Big Num. Gold. Where are you heading off to? He's just uh, wandering himself around. Tron is going up to top. So Ember Spirit with the Tusk up at top lane. Cheshire Cat's solo bot lane. And J4 looks like he's wandering himself up to the top as well. EGM and Pycat mid with Obane and Invoker. And Niqua, yeah, you're right, up at top. Quelling Blade at the ready. One sentry as well to try and deward anything that the uh, Radiant do place out. But Saxa and Bambo, a dual lane Wraith King and Night Stalker. Uh, I guess EGM's walking himself over here as well. But th they've got tons of stuns. Absolutely tons to stop this Queen of Pain from blinking away. But do they have the damage? Is the question. Yeah, I think that's actually the biggest issue here. I mean, yeah, sure, you have like, you have like your sleep, even like the void, but it's not enough burst to actually kill her, I feel. They need to cons consistently harass her to actually make that happen. And I like this laning stage coming out from Power Rangers, to be honest. Again, the power, uh, the Queen of Pain should be mostly fine here, I think, unless Cheshire Cat overextends. The Trilane top sort of like keeps the Brute Mother in check, and the Razor, I mean, this is such an. Oh, Sun Strike Void, they've got. Um Bit of damage ticking over, but not enough. 40 health and salves up. I just kept flicking back and forth between top and bot because Nico was getting a little bit too big for his boots. The Radiant Sentry is scouting him out, but he's, he's playing it well so far. The thing is, if he gets his Sentry down here, it's obs and Sentry. And uh, yep, he's got it. Nom nom nom. Gold and... Uh, oh, Bambo, D they're diving. They're diving Shashaket. Oh, he has Blink right. though. He, he's still... Oh, there's even a TP coming out. Who's this Tusk? Cancels. Cancels his TP. Doesn't want to leave the Broodmother up here against two heroes. But the thing is, Cheshire Cat is being oh, forced eating, completely... They're eating through. No, no, they're not. They can't. They don't have enough. They can't get in there. He, he, he tried it. He tried it. <laughs> they're still looking. He's going no. for it, honestly. You can't do it. Now, oh, 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 God. Oh, oh. Bambo. Bambo. It just oh, feels did like... Did he hear that? Oh, no, he didn't. he doesn't know. It's one of those situations like Jaws, you know? Bambo, Bambo. He's such a sneaky little devil just, you know, creeping up on you. Getting up in there. Top lane, Nikwa. Oh, stun yeah. misses. If that had hit, that would have been a kill. Flame Guard. Burning oh, he, through this HP he of Nikwa. He knows where Nikwa is going. Worthy tribute. Uh, sentry's but yeah, down. I, I really like this laning stage coming up for Power Rangers. This is like... Such an easy matchup, actually, for Rise. Look at his last hits. Eight denies. Pycat is not getting anything here. And this... Oh, Cheshire Cat. <laughs> what the hell? They're, like... <laughs> they're the, dedicating two supports for this. He doesn't have a lane. Like, the Queen of... This is the thing. When I was talking in the draft about Queen of Pain maybe going off lane and maybe going in, like, a dual lane, trial lane situation, the one big glaring problem with Queen of Pain in any position other than safe lane farming solo or mid-solo is that she really does suffer from lack of levels.
Oh, they're going mid. Nightmare to set it up. Some strike and alacrity. Oh, God. They've got tons of damage. Arise. There's nothing to stop him from dying. Cheshire Cat comes in to try and help him out, but oh, he might die himself. He's keeping the blink just in case, but look at the damage oh he's taking. Blinks away again with about 30 health. And from the side, Big Num. Hello. He's got the snowball, but now it's Power Rangers that are really lacking the damage. Are you, uh, you might want to check your mic threshold in Dota TV. Someone said that might be a little bit too, uh, too low. Oh, no! Okay. No! Really? Ha Damn. There's no vision Pike there. It. Pike it too strong. How did he know? It's Pike it, man. Queen of Pain pings it out. How, how did he know? I think this is where you just post or spam vac into the chat. Can uh, into Twitch chat. I mean, okay, I'm gonna keep my eye on the on the on the stream because he can't have Forge Spirits. Like he doesn't. He actually does not have a point in Qua, so he can't have a Forge Spirit scouting it out. There's no vision there. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. Pycat, bloody hell! What a god. Two zero zero boots null and his gloves of haste. So getting very quickly into that Midas. Up at top lane, Tron. 22 and 9, so they're doing decently against this Broodmother, but she's going to start picking up pace very quickly. Sol Ring and level 4, close to level 5, and this is where she starts to peak in the laning phase anyway. It's level 5, the level 3 spawn spiderlings. You just spam them out, you keep building them up, and if you look down at bot lane, the Queen of Pain, she's still sitting at level 2, sucks at level 5. 4 CNL, they're out farming, out laning, out leveling, and to be honest, it feels like a, an outdraft in the laning phase anyway here. Power Rangers obviously do have a little more you know, wiggle room as it goes later, like you said. Ember, Razor, as well as this Queen of Pain Lena, you know, all of these heroes scale pretty decently as we head on into sort of 25, 30 minutes. But if they get, you know, getting to 25, 30 minutes, that's the issue right now for them. I will say, though, that I thought the Power Rangers laning stage was mostly okay until that gank happened onto Rise. The fact that the Rise died was actually so big just because it was a, uh, it allowed Pycat to sort of like come back into this laning stage. Then suddenly he's actually doing quite fine in terms of like last He actually caught up a lot, and um, especially also with that kill on the on the Queen of Pain, as you pointed out, like he's actually getting really close to that play, uh, to that Midas, like only 500 gold away or 600, I guess. Now, do you remember when we watched um, Team Alternate? Oh, maybe it wasn't you and me uh, playing Voker against the Darkseer. Oh no, I, I think I was I was casting that yeah. Where he went for this Alacrity Exalt build so he could mm -hmm. get the. Sorry, he oh, went for the Wex, Wex Exalt build. So you get the early Alacrity. I think we're going to be seeing this more and more often. You know, people used to make jokes about the Wex Nikwa. Exalt build. Yeah, Nikwa is... He looks like he's okay and oh might even just God, get the, the kill on J4 with the Spidelings following through. I'm going to keep my eyes on the Lena. Dragon Slave, is it going to be enough? He moves the Spidelings back! Lena still dies. Wait, what? My game's... Lena died, right? My game's lagging. Or something. Yeah, Lena died. Lena died for sure. I didn't get a message for it. Bot lane, Wraith King kills off the Queen of Pain. And... Okay, weird, weird stuff's happening. Just just reborn things. Sustains yeah. Good okay. Of course, Nell wrapping up. They they want this all rise again. They definitely want to keep keep him down. I mean, they've been doing a good job with the Queen of Pain, and they want to let the Razor know what it feels like. But that one good ward scouts it out. Oh, I think I missed it. I think I missed the kill on the Queen of Pain. Yeah. Damn it. Me too. I, I just checked and I just missed it. <laughs> time, to, time to open up another another PC and open it to rewind. <laughs> Except you can't do that because uh, you just can't. Well, uh, yeah, back to my point. The Invoker build. People used to make jokes, you know, literally say that it is awful. Oh, we're going to see action in bottom lane, aren't we? Cheshire Cat. Uh, he's going to get dived he here. He didn't see sexy he can't Yeah, Bambo just walked straight past him and he's dead. No. Pie Cat on a killing spree. Three and zero. Now, this build... That's Smiter swing in, by the way. Seven minutes in with boots as well. This is and amazing. He got, he got actually, I want to say, not crushed, but he got definitely, and he definitely lost the lighting stage in like the first two, three, four minutes until that gank happened. So this is actually pretty good for him. Yeah, people used to make fun of the Wex Exhort build because it gives you no utility or anything in like the laning phase. There were a few people that tried it out and kind of, you know, fiddled with it just because Alacrity and Cold Snap. And I know that when, was it two patches ago? Sing Sing, uh, not Sing Sing, Cinderin. Oh god, top lane, Nikwa remnants. He's in a little bit of trouble, but they can't see him anymore. Yes, yes they can. Sentry's placed, and that's Nikwa dead. Tron, yes, in there with the damage. Bambo here with the revenge. 
Can he actually get this kill? Sunstrike? Sunstrike off the mark. Tron, he doesn't have mana or anything to turn back around and fight. And he can't jump away, but Bambo taking a pounding and a snowball to the face, but he's got stick charges and he gets pushed out. Clips away from the shards there. The Big Numb, this is this is deep. Magic. This is very deep. Any TPs coming in here could crush Power Rangers. And here comes one. Wraith King, level six Wraith King. He is here and he's ready to fight. Sexy Bambo juke through the trees and gets out, but J4. You've got a stun, you've got something, you've got death, destruction, and sun strikes raining down from the sky as Bignum TPs out. There's nothing to stop him. There's, there's no vision from the Bane, and Tron gets himself away. Okay, oh, please. Can, can, I, can I talk about Invoker, please? Game that just kills every time. Uh, yeah, Cinderin called it out like two or three patches ago that with the change to Alacrity giving like more damage, more attack speed, the change to Cold Snap, where it would become more viable to go for this kind of build with, uh, with Alacrity very early on. And it's taken a while for people to adapt and realize that it gives you such a massive laning advantage over your opponent. Because you can, you can last it and deny creeps from like half health. It's ridiculous. Yeah, and uh, as you pointed out, or the, the game you mentioned with Darkseid, like the, the amount of damage he, he was able to dish out early on, that was actually ridiculous. Especially now that the Invoker, of course, he has gotten a buff in terms of like agility uh, gain, which I think he was very much needed. Oh, bottom? Nah. Dust hits, but they can't really follow it up. Mm. But yeah. Just get hit level six. And Are they really good for this? Gonna get the snowball. Dust wears off, but there's a fresh one from Big Num. Ah, it's a bit of a waste. Two dusts, a ton of mana expended, and nothing to call their own. Oh, Pycat. Look at this farm. It's disgusting. Mm. 4,500 from the mid lane. Invoker. Oh, what a hero. And he's going straight into the Necro book. Interesting. Interesting. Now this is the... So I expect this sort of like Hani kind of um, play coming out. Hani, I think, was one of the more dominant invokers that used to do this sort of like split push kind of play on a very consistent level. Just go for the Necro books and then just split push with Necro units and, of course, the um, Forge Spirits. Which, by the way, he hasn't used so far, which I find very surprising. Yeah, with, with, the, with the kill power from Sunstrike, you kind of always want it up, and I don't think he's actually been invoking anything else, right? He's just had Alacrity and Sunstrike yeah, constantly. I think that's pretty much it, yeah. Those are what he's using, because you know, not having them available is going to put you at some slight disadvantage in both lane and global killing power for the rest of your team. And Forge Spirits this early on, before you get the double Forge, they're not that useful. You know, against a Razor, who's going to walk up, Static link you, and then just kill off your Forge Spirit. You're not going to get any killing potential back onto him with Cold Snap and Spirit or anything like that. So I, I can understand this. But I my feel like it helps you in terms of laning, though. You could you could stack camps, you can go and control runes. Yeah. But it's like, against any other hero, I'd agree. But against the Razor, it doesn't do that much. In top lane, they really want to go for this. Oh, Bambo's tanky. Is he tanky enough, though? He's got stick charges, he's got a little bit of movement speed, but Cheshire Cat's got the blink. Jumps forward and Saxa. <laughs> they can't dive it. They realize he has a mango. They see that he's got no mana for ultimate, but that mango really makes the difference. They invested two TPs and a rotation from the Razors, though, for, uh, though, for a support Night Stalker. And on the bottom lane, Nikwa is pressuring this tower. Uh, I guess it was kind of okay, but I don't think it was really worth it. Um, but at least Cheshire Cat, he caught up. He's suddenly almost level 7, actually. He's still really low on the farm, though, and he's actually, yeah. he's going for this urn build, which we've, uh, we've seen from Mag arise, as well, I think, strike. as well. The sun strike, yeah, and the slow from the void arises. He's, he's tanky, but the splitling just swarm him. Now yeah, they take the tier one as well. There's no glyph. They will get the trade off though up at top. It's being dropped by Arcade Power Rangers as Saxa. Now we've talked about the Invoker. His farm is great. The Midas is, you know, it's necessary on your Invoker to get your levels up. On the Wraith King, though, we've We've seen a lot of people ignore the Midas and just kind of, you know, skip over it because you need that, you need that early fighting power. Maybe they're thinking here that, sure, get ourselves a good early game lead, and then we transition not through, you know, hero picks, but itemization through the through to sort of the mid game, late game, with the Midas, with you know, blade mail, then into radiance, rather than going for that straight out. I'm going to blink on you. I'm going to use my armlet, my drums, just to run you down. They can still, they can still try, but they're going for a more not defensive, but a, a kind of more stable approach to this game, it feels. Yeah, I think just the laning stage kind of made the decision for him. I mean, he had pretty much free farm, pretty much perfect CS. Um, if you get a really good 
Midas timing on a hero like Wraith King, you definitely go for it. Uh, I mentioned it in the draft, if you get like an early level 16, that 60 second uh, reincarnation is actually really strong. I mean, you can just pretty much team fight every 60 seconds and don't really mind dying. Oh, by the way, Power Ring just completely being spotted out by this Observer Ward. They smoked up there, it wore off, and... <sighs> Yeah, that Ob's Ward sees everything. Bambo, how are we actually looking for your Night Stalker? Attack. He's gone for Urn Brown Boots, and I almost feel like he goes for Midas as well. Nikwa has a, he's gone for the Phase Boots Orchid, which has become more predominant nowadays as the kind of key build for your Broodmothers. Phase Boots gives you so, so much more mobility and damage, you just zip around inside your webs, and you can find pickoffs potentially like this. He scouts him out, he sees Big Num and J4. Uh oh, oh, wait a second. What's going on here? J4 dead already. Killed off and finished off as Niqua. Hey, you've walked outside of your webs, but in comes a Bambo. Stuns him up and stops the TP. Big Num. This is a Sunstrike kill if I've ever seen one. Pike Cat. Up to 5 0 1. Necrobook. The first one completed with a Blade Mail for your Wraith King. Everything's coming up. Rose is here for 4 CNL. Yeah, and Niqua, he is. Like, just in terms of farm, he caught up really nice. I mean, he's the third highest in net worth, and he's building towards that Orchid. Uh, quite interesting, but I think in this game it definitely makes a lot of sense. Like, that Orchid is really strong against basically all of Power Rangers' heroes. Maybe not the Razor, but everybody else aside from the Razor, that Orchid makes a lot of sense. And Tron, if they had the Orchid, that would be an easy kill. Right now they have to rely on Bamboo to get the silence off. Yeah, not as easy as you may think. As Tron is just spamming out. Look, he's got, what, three? Oh no, he doesn't. That's his first defensive remnant. I was looking at the red dots for some reason. Stupid oh, web. Flame guard wore, wore off. Oh, he still jumps back. Is that far enough? Looks like it might just be. Bambo is in hot pursuit, but he's not fast enough for the Ember Spirit zipping himself out. Up at top lane though, Cheshire Cat, EGM. Oh, he's got Fiend's Grip. Cheshire Cat, are you dead? You look pretty dead. Sucks at holding onto the stun. He'll throw it out now and kill. <laughs> I like that they didn't even use the Sunstrike for it. It was more like, hey guys, can I have this kill for once, please? Like it, you're so farmed already. Give kills, please. Bye, cat. Buzz oh, cat, sexy, sexy bamboo. bamboo. There we go. Power Rangers, they get some revenge. And if I find Nikwa, he's in range of a sentry ward. It's getting a little bit scary. But what stuns do they have? What chase do they have? The shards? Oh no, he clips out of them again. Tragic for Power Rangers. Very unfortunate, especially since J4 was the only one with dust. If Ryze had dust there, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say that uh, it's his fault for not having dust, but it's just very unfortunate. If J4 had been uh, in the front line there, they could have slowed him down at least. Well, right now, 3 to 9, 15 minutes in. Wraith King and Evoker farming their butts off with about 7,500 net worth across them both. What, what's the lead looking like? Yeah, yeah. Seven and a half thousand net worth lead. Pretty, yeah, that's, that's a pretty hefty lead for 15 minutes. Power in. of Midas, dude. Power, yeah, power of Power of Midas. double Midas. And, yeah. okay, Bambo's not going Midas. He went for phase boots. Interesting Aww. ward spot. Interesting. I, li I like the other one that I think... Liquid. Yeah, exactly. Liquid is doing, or usually likes to do. Other teams have adapted. I think NMP did it last game as well. But it's like a really good ward. And it rarely gets dewarded just because it is... I mean, nowadays, I guess it gets dewarded more commonly, but it didn't used to be dewarded. And the word that Bamba posted or planted is more commonly dewarded, to be honest. But Power uh, Rangers for now, no sentries. It's it's in a kind of weird spot, though. It's like if you want to deward here and here, you place a sentry here, and that's going to be like just out of range of it. Bot lane, J4... Wait, Tron? Tron jumped in here, but he's going to be able to walk himself away. They've already used a bunch of their abilities, and that's that's interesting for me. Saxo goes for Blade Mail and Blink. Jump on the Cheshire Cat. They've got the Fiend's Grip again, this time with the Sunstrike. They'll finish the Queen of Pain off. Wraith King swipes in there. In comes the Rise, though. Static Link cancelled out immediately. And there's nothing to stun up EGM as he just TPs himself away. This is... It's hit and run. Like looking, yeah, it is it really not looking good for Power Rangers. They're getting picked apart here and there. They can't really keep up with the pace from 4 you know, And that's mostly just because... Their heroes, they have weird item timings. Oh, Pycat. Chains. He's got the low Sunstrike J4 dead. Pycat's still alive. Tron gets the kill. But Sansa should be able to clear this one up with Bambo's help. There's no more remnants. Nothing left for Tron to jump himself away. But the shards, maybe. Blink in two. We'll give him the chance. Yeah, you're right. There's the blink. Snowball available to save him up. Saxa stunned. And in comes Cheshire Cat. He's got Sonic Wave. That's the first life of your Wraith King gone. And Arai is going to clear up Sexy Bambo. So maybe a little bit too deep here from 14 Ls. They lose two heroes, but no stuns remaining. 
And Saxa will TP himself away with his life. They're chasing Tron there. It felt like they had it, but it was just a little Radiant bit too far away. They are getting a bigger trade-off, though, in the tier 2 at bottom lane. Niqua takes that, and there's his Orchid. And this basically negates almost all the kind of, like, positive things that Power Rangers got out of that trade. I mean, yeah, cool, you get, like, the Invoker and stuff. That's definitely good for them, for sure. But at the same time, they lose a lot of map control right now. And Niqua is just... He has, he has his Orchid now, so he can kill the Lina by himself. He can probably even kill the Queen of Pain by himself. And possibly even the Tusk. Tron, I'm not sure, but he's probably going to try soon anyway, as soon as the Flame Blood runs out. Oh, never mind, Tron's just gone. And then if you if you compare like overall optimization and where the game is going, Arise. Remnant forward onto EGM. He's got his brain sap and he's actually allowing Arise to drain a ton of damage here, but the turn back allows well, them to escape. But yeah, you compare like the actual direction that optimization is going for both of these teams. Sunstrike. No. Pycat waiting for it. Come on, Arise, can you dodge this? Oh yeah, Sunstrike misses. There we go. Um yeah, look at the Ember Spirit. Going for Manta style because he knows that Orchid's coming up for the Broodmother. So he's having to adapt outside of his normal means. You know, Battle Fury. I don't know what he just did then, but that, that was a cock up. Tried to, tried to Remnant TP, but that uh, didn't work. Oh god, top lane. Queen of Pain. Along with the Tusk and the Lena, kill off Wraith King with that ultimate and down. This is why you want the level 16 as fast as possible. Because if it had been a level 16 or a level 3 reincarnation, um, he would have, he would have, uh, that would have been up again. That's very unfortunate. But also, really good timing from Power Rangers or J4. You're dead. Oh, bloody hell. Power of Exord Invoker. Yeah, definitely. But yeah. And Necrobook 3 is ready. Ember Spirit has to go away from his, you know, ideal item build. Has to go for the Manta because of the Orchid. The Lina is in a support role, so, you know, Arcane's Yules, now that's going to be okay. The Tusk isn't getting the farm that he'd love. You know, there's going to be no Blink, no Arcane Mech, no Greaves, no, uh, no anything. While the Queen of Pain treads Urn. And now with a Staff of Wizardry, I guess going for a Yule Scepter to stop herself getting destroyed by the Orchid and Razor. Sanji Nasha, that's like the one hero that's being able to, Top to go for a normal Trump. build, I guess. Oh, dearie me, they're going to go in on Pycat. They get the shards to block him in, but who's blocked in? Is it, is it the Tusk or the Invoker? It looks like Big Num's going to be dropping here to Bambo while the chase is on over on the west. Remnant back. Tron does oh, not have, have a TP. For another 14 seconds. He's gonna remnant across. Can he make a? Can he make an escape out of this one? Doesn't look like it. Bambo bearing down on his target. Tron found, cornered, slaughtered. He's gone. He's done for. Out of fuel. But yeah, I, I think ah. the 14 L are in like their their item progression and item decision comfort zones for the heroes anyway. You know, every single one of their heroes is allowed to, and has been given room to go for the items that they want to and they they like to. Whereas Power Rangers have to kind of change course and adapt every step of the way. And it's always Radiance uncomfortable Tower being in those situations. And Broodmother actually solo killed the Razor, which I didn't think was possible to be honest, but uh, to be fair, Rise wasn't full HP to begin with, so I guess that kind of played into it, but Nikwa, yeah, he's just terrorizing this jungle. And this is, again, this is like Power Rangers getting picked apart like all over the map. They can't really keep up with the pace that uh, 4CNL is sort of like dictating and they have insane amount of map control. Like this one spiderling from, from Nikwa scouted out the Lina. So he knows Lina's here. There's probably, yeah, Bignum, he even saw Bignum as well. So rotation coming in. They see everything. They see everything coming in. And yep, Nikwa. He's actually going to get rolled into here, but Lina not in position. Nikwa turns to fight. He's got this. It's Ember Spirit jumping forward, but I'm not sure about this. Big Num dead under the spider link. Sonic Wave will clear them up, but now the Fiend script is cancelled out. Finger of Death, uh, Laguna Blade even, will be able to drop EGM low, but look at the rest of this. Saxa jumps in, finds J4, stuns him up. Blade Mail abound, and J4 in a ton of trouble as Pycat one hit kill. Alacrity's up. There we go. Slam down. Cheshire Cat blinks away. Tron. Brutal. Tron run away as quickly as he you can. He doesn't have TP again just because he TP'd into the fight. Um, if for, I mean, Force Now can, can't really do anything. Actually, they could TP to the tier 1 and try to fight him, but nah. Like two supports for a Broodmother and a Night Stalker, that, that's kind of worth it for Power Rangers. They, they got, actually, Queen of Pain gets 1200 gold from that. Sure, she killed a whole army of Spiderlings, but that's your Scepter done now. So Power Rangers, they've been adapting decently. They've taken down one tier one tower though, and once they get the ball rolling, taking down towers becomes easier. But 14L going into the Roche pit now, and Saxa, 
He's a level and a half away from 16. Like you mentioned, a key pivotal point for this Wraith King. But with Alacrity DD up on him, the Roshan oh doesn't last long. He's got 332 damage, and he's also very close to his Relic. They don't even have a medallion, yet he's like melting underneath this power. And with this, yeah, you give it, you definitely give it to Invoker. With this, he can play so much more aggressively. I like the force stuff coming out from Pycat. It's a really good item against Razor and uh, the Tusk, even even the Ember Spirit to an extent. So they can play much more aggressive with this. Speaking of which, Sexy Bamboo, he finds Cheshire Cat. Cheshire Cat should be. Uh, there's some Yolts, oh. but there's also Brain Sap. Cheshire Cat. He's got no mana to TP, and he's oh, he's, he's going to get it. They're not going to find him. Big Nom, though, has been gripped up, and he will be killed off. Bot lane, what are we looking at? Tron and Tron and J4 are hiding, scared for their lives, because the Broodmother's running rampant through their jungle. They have seen Nikwa, though. They're going to try and wrap in on her, but just look. Spiderling. 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 Nikwa has been immaculate with his Spiderling placement. Everywhere. Just... Catching everyone, seeing every little move that Power Rangers Radiant's actually wants to pull. And he's actually now attack. pulling the creep wave across with his spider lane. <laughs> so nasty. He's doing this on purpose, right? He wants yeah. to try and draw this lane back and stop them pushing into tier one. Yeah, no trade offs allowed. They take tier one down at the middle lane, and bot attack. tier one still standing because they know that if Power Rangers can take these tier ones, they get themselves a good boost of gold, and that could allow them to get back into the game. Up until now, for the past, I want to say, three to four minutes, uh, forcing L only at like one ward out. But just because of all the spider links, they had so much vision, actually, and so much power uh, or information or arise. Uh, they don't. No, no, now they find him. Top oh. lane, Bambo, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, J4 is going to get jumped and stunned, and he's dead. Alacrity. There's so much damage. Like, Pycat, what is he up to? Come on. Give me the bloody invoker. There we go. 300, basically. 300 damage. So, Bambo, where did he die? Up towards the very far of the top lane. I was watching the wraparound from 14L over onto the others. They missed out on Arise and Cheshire Cat. Ar Ar Arise? Farming Dire Jungle, and I guess they've got no vision of this, so they won't know, but middle lane Tron, Remnant away. Yep, he's got one, defensively. All the way back there, but they still see him. They know where he's heading to. Oh, and Nico. Nico's up on the high ground oh. with a BKB Orchid. Could even go in for this, because Tron's heading down to bottom lane. And looking for spiderlings, looking for things to kill. Trying to build up into his battle fury. He scouted out, though. And I'm now... honestly surprised Nico isn't going for this. Like, he has the information that, I mean, the supports probably weren't going to be there because they were dead up until now. And I don't know, I think he could have gone for it. Instead, he just goes for the safe support kill. Poor Bignan. Yeah, over on the sides. Arise clears up some spiderlings. Now Night Stalker gets his ags. He's got a gem as well. Next night time, Bambo is going to be an absolute beast. Look at this Lena. The, you know the the thing is, there is no comparison between the support oh, of the radiant and the support of the dire. So dead. Meatball. They blink. have a sun strike. He's burning. Oh. Um, he's, yeah, he has actually. Interest. He's got blink. He's away for now. It's not, it's not night time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they can't see him. They can't find him. Middle lane, Saxa. He's got his ultimate here, so he doesn't... Oh, it's level 3. He's, he's hit level 16, so he's not too pissed off about losing his ulti, but he will be if he dies again, because Tron has jumped in with the chains across both of them. Bambo. Now, under a little bit of pressure, is this... Uh, this old Wraith King didn't go for the Radiance, which I thought he would be. Assault Curass is picked up by him. I think this is better. This suits their pace, sort of. I think the Midas, I think Midas and Radiance is too greedy, honestly. It really takes the pace out of your game. I mean, the the Wraith King without the, uh, if you go if you go Midas Radiance, even if you go Blink in between, it just takes too long to get really online. And with this, they can apply much more pressure in terms of, like pushing, and um, even when they want to take Roshan, for example, I think that could be really strong. So I, I like this. I, I don't like going Radiance after Midas. Oh, Saxa is taking full control of the enemy jungle now with the Broodmother as well. And EGM, how are we looking? Uh, he doesn't have oh, any big items. Lane. He's been buying all the wards and everything like that. Pycat, is he being hunted down here? I think Aegis expires in like a minute. They want to uh, set up a trap, I think. 45 seconds or something until Pycat's Aegis goes. EGM, so close. Oh, goodness, look at this. They know he's there. They, they, they know he's there. Pycat takes a Laguna Blade and Static Link, but he'll respawn. And now with J4 nightmared up, can, can they turn the fight? Yeah, they're going to get the kill on J4. He's dead. 
This is this is actually really good for 40 nil. Ace Aegis was going to expire. But now they've got the blink. For oh god, Saxa is in vis. He's spotted out by the sentry. He doesn't jump forward onto Bignum. Doesn't want to put himself into a situation where maybe it's a little bit too ballsy. But yeah, Aegis was expiring. 40 nil maybe would have liked to use it pushing into the tier two. But they got a trade-off for it anyway, which Power Rangers gave to them. And this is going to be a very terrifying, I want to say, 10 to 12 minutes now. Um, just because Bambo popped his darkness. It's level 2 darkness. He waited until it was level 11. Uh, with the Aghanim Scepter, meaning they take control of the map pretty much for the next yeah, 10 minutes or so. And if you're if you're Power Rangers, look at the map. What kind of vision do they have? Nothing, basically. You think 10 minutes? 10 to 12 minutes? Yeah. I guess with Queen of Pain Aghanims, maybe they can make it last that long, but I'm not sure. Nikwa with the webs up and this army of spiderlings. Oh, God. This tier 3 tower is not going to last long at all. Pop, I think it's... No, oh, you don't need Sonic Wave, but... It's a lot of gold, actually. Slight of fist bouncing around everywhere. But yeah, look at this. Night time's up. And Bambo's got full vision of everybody. Top tower it was almost perfectly timed, actually, by Bambo. I really like that. Um, he almost had it perfectly with a uh, sync with the night cycle. Tier 3 tower. Hey, yep. What? Pie cat. Like it. Interesting decision that, that's now. That's not the play. Stuck in the ice shards, but he's going to save himself. Tornado. Just to uh, give him that little bit of freedom to walk himself away. They've got Necro books up with Alacrity. And they've got this Wraith King ulti to use as well. It's interesting that they're not forcing the issue. You know, Nick was pushing mid pretty decently, pushing bottom lane. He's, yeah, they've not got another lane actually hard pushing in. But they could take this tier three at the very least. There's no glyph. They know this. There's nothing to stop them apart from you know that all-in play from Power Rangers to defend their base. Yeah, and this is just if you're Power Rangers, you you feel kind of trapped because you. Can, I mean, if you go out outside of your base, you kind of run the danger of like just getting caught out like then there just needs to be one fiend script right one fiend script into sun strike into i don't know void and uh and even like the the orchid silence and you're dead right there's tier three gone and this gives uh, both nikwa and saxa an easier route up onto these racks and maybe even diving behind them to find a kill onto one of these heroes but arise is getting closer and closer to his bkb that magic community could be a could be a fight swinger. Could be a game changer for him. So if he saps all the damage out from the Wraith King and then could turn and fight onto the Invoker or someone like that, these can uh, things can turn pretty quickly. But if the fight starts like this, where Saxa jumps straight onto J4, takes him down to half HP and he's burnt down. A few more hits will finish him off, but uh, not quite just yet. They take down the range racks. Melee still standing, but Sonic Wave across them all. Bambo very nearly dead, but the Meatball Deafening Blast arrives. Oh, that's it. You're done for, mate. No buyback available. And Sax is still with his ultimate on the front lines. He dies for the first time. He'll come back to life in a couple of seconds. Fiend's Grip is up on Big Num, And this looks like it might just be it for Power Rangers. Cheshire Cat blinks away, but Broodmother Niqua takes down two of them on the side. Ember Spirit tries his hardest to slide a fist through them, but... This is what I mean, man. You say 10 to 12 minutes. I was thinking like four to five. Yeah, uh, that was just, I mean, what do you do against this, this, this Wraith King? You kind of don't want to expend any spells for him just because, again, he's just going to come back to life anyway. And he's actually quite tanky. But at the same time, if you don't, he's just going to pound on you, right? So this is like such a big dilemma. The same with the Night Stalker, by the way. If he runs at you, do you really want to expend spells for a support Night Stalker who basically doesn't do anything? No. So, yeah. Very convincing win by 4 I gotta yeah. say, standout performance from almost, yeah, basically every 4 player as well. Like, laning phase didn't go well for Power Rangers, but also during the draft, they, they have no high ground defense. You know, we, we talk about it a lot during drafts when we see it, but we very rarely point it out when, when we don't see it. But here, I didn't really think about it until this base push came in from 4 What does Power Rangers have to stop it? There's no, there's no Wyvern, there's no Darkseer, Enigma, Magnus, what do they have? They've got a couple of heroes that can wave clear, and the Sonic Wave, Queen of Pain, and the Lena.